Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Austin Hancock and today we're gonna to talk about VA loans. I'm a veteran, I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran and I get people that ask me a lot of times, hey, should I use my VA loan for my first investment property? Well, one thing you may not know is you cannot use your VA loan for a investment property. You have to live in the property for a certain period of time before you can make somebody else live in the property or get somebody else to lease the property from you and make it a rental. But I wanna talk about some of the pros and some of the cons of VA loans. I'm not gonna go in depth a lot about the loans themselves, but I get, I'm gonna give you some food for thought so that you guys can go out and make the best decision for you. VA loans, what are VA loans? Well, they're loans that they are given to veterans. So people that have been in the military, right? For those of you that have been in the military and are watching this and or have a family member that has been in one, maybe you're familiar with them. So one of the benefits to VA loans is they can be assumed. So they're assumable loans, meaning one veteran can sell his house to the next veteran without the interest rate changing and they don't have to go get a new loan. They're just gonna assume that portion of the debt. All right, that's a huge benefit, especially when times like now in 2024, when I'm recording this video, where interest rates have gone up and maybe a veteran has a 3% interest rate and the interest rates in the market or VA loans are six and 7%. That veteran with a 3% loan can sell that loan, sell that house with that loan to another veteran and that veteran will assume the 3% loan, which is great and very beneficial to veterans, right? But we're talking about investment properties because if you guys don't already know, I'm a real estate investor and I I teach other people how to buy property. You guys can click the link down below and join our school community or click the link below and ask a little more questions about how I can help you create wealth in real estate investing. One thing about real estate investing with a VA loan that you have to be super cautious about is one, like I said a minute ago, you're gonna have to live in the property. So if you're gonna end up getting a tenant in there later, it's gonna have to be a lot later. And then if you have a tenant in this type of property and you have a VA loan, you're not gonna be able to go get another VA loan. If you wanna buy another primary residence for yourself, you're gonna to have to get a conventional loan. You're gonna to have to get a traditional style loan, a different mortgage, right? And so a lot of people don't end up using that for that scenario. But they're like, hey, the reason they think this, this is because I've gotten the call a lot of times, and they're like, should I use a VA loan? Well, why do you think that? Well, it's because I have to put a little money down, all right? Well, little money down can be a good thing in some scenarios, but it can also be a bad thing. And let me explain why. So a VA loan, depending on the veteran, depending on the situation, you can have 10% down, you can have 5% down, and sometimes even 0% down on these certain types of VA loans. When, a lot of times with a more traditional style mortgage, it could be anywhere from 30% to 10% down, depending on the person on traditional style loans. I'm just gonna abbreviate it. And so if you're a veteran, the most appealing thing to you is like, I don't have a lot of cash. Maybe you're a young veteran that just got out of the military and you're like, I don't have a lot of cash, I'm gonna use the VA loan, and I'm not gonna put any money down. But let me explain to you in this scenario why that would be a bad thing. Because the good thing is, wow, I don't have to bring the money to the table. What are you talking about? and I can get into a piece of property, own a piece of real estate with almost little money, and I'm using my VA loan to do that. Hey, what's up guys, Austin Hancock here. I get a lot of messages asking for some help in some capacity, whether it's financial, fitness, mindset, something to make your life better, something to make it to where you can go from this point right here, where you are now, to the dream life that you've always wanted to be living. Shoot me a text or give me a call, 405-697-4072. The number's right here, 405-697-4072. Call or text the number and let's change your life. Well, let me give you an example of why I've seen this hurt veterans. Let's say you get stationed at a place where you have to buy a property. Okay. So boom, we get stationed at a spot. We're going to go buy a house. This is a great idea. I'm going to use my VA loan. I'm going to buy this house. I just got stationed here. I'm going to own this home and I'm going to keep it. And you know, I'm going to end up renting it later if I have to move. Uh, or you're like, I have to get out of it and I'm going to sell it because I need to sell it because I can't afford to get another property because the bank won't loan me any more money because I don't make enough money to have two properties on this style of loan. Well, let me explain. So if you go and buy a property for $200,000 and you had to put zero down, most of the times on a traditional mortgage or a VA loan, it's front loaded with interest. So you're gonna be making interest payments for up to three to five years only. Very minimal principal payment. Interest is the money that the bank gets paid for loaning you the money, right? That's how they make their money. And a lot of times that right there means that your principal, the amount that you actually owe on the loan that you purchased the home for doesn't get paid down, right? So let's say you stay there and you're stationed there for maybe one year or two years, right? The bad thing about this is that the property, depending on the market, may have not gone up in value. So it may have not be worth much more. In one year, that property could be worth 205, right? In two years, depending on the market, let's give you even more. Let's say it's worth 220. Wow, that's great. Well, we still owe 
quite a bit on the property, probably close to the 200,000. And why is this a bad thing, Austin? My property went up in value. Yeah, but if you're gonna have to sell the property, the downfall is when you go to sell that property and you still owe that $200,000 and you put zero money down, you're gonna have to pay some closing costs. You're gonna have to pay the realtor. You're gonna have to pay the closing costs in general for the title company. Those, depending on where you're at, could be a decent little percentage. Uh, you're gonna have to negotiate with the realtor what kind of percentage, but if somebody, if the buyer's agent comes to you and they have a buyer to buy your home and they're percentage is 3% or 2% that's negotiated, it's going to come right out of the purchase price, depending on how you've negotiated, all right? Laws have changed. But my point is, there's not enough meat on the bone, there's not enough money here for you to be able to pay the realtor to sell your home, because now you're going to be negative, right? So if you sold the home and you had to pay the realtor, this is all as an example, right? So bear with me. So let's say we purchased it for 200 over here, right? This is purchase price. We sold the property. Well, let's give you all the benefit of the doubt for 220 after two years, but we had to pay 25,000 in closing costs. And you're like, why would I have to pay 25,000 in closing costs? Let's say your dog chewed up the door, you didn't want to fix it. Let's say the realtor's commissions were a little high. Let's say all of these things, the TRR report, meaning the repairs on the property, like I said, the dog chewed up the door, was a little higher than you expected. And so you either have to give them a credit or you have to fix those things. And you're like, to hell with that. I'm not hiring anybody. I'm getting stationed somewhere else. I got to go. I need to take this to property and I need to move it. Now we're in a hole. We have 195, right? So now you're going to pay off what well, you still owe the bank. Let's pretend you still owe the bank the 200, which realistically, you're probably going to row the bank somewhere around the 195, the 198. But in this specific scenario, so you guys can get the point, you're still at a $5,000 loss, okay? You're at a 5K loss, negative. So you'd have to pay to sell your property. A lot of you guys understand this when it comes to cars. You're like, I don't want to be upside down in my car. But when you go and you buy a piece of property at retail price, top dollar, with a VA loan where you put no money down, if you have to move within a short period of time, maybe one, two, three years, depending on the market, depending on where you're stationed, depending on where you buy the property, you're going to be upside down, right? So that's the downfall to VA loans. And that's the, the reason that you can get stuck. Also, another scenario is even though you may have gotten an interest rate that was lower, maybe you had to put 0% down, in your mind, you're like, I own a piece of real estate. I could be an investor that way. This is a great idea. What if the market goes down? We're not even taking into consideration that if the market shifts and nobody's buying property at $200,000 anymore, that that property could be worth 185 in a snap of a finger because the feds made the interest rates go up to 10%. So then you could be even more upside down. And now what you're going to do is you're going to say, Austin, I need to sell my home. Can you buy it? I need help. Now there's multiple creative ways to solve that problem, but we can't go over all of them today because all we're going over today is VA loans, pros and cons. That would be a con to having a VA loan. And that's usually because you have lack of education in real estate. You don't understand real estate investing. You don't understand loans. You don't understand any of it. You've just been given this big nasty loan and you say, hey, this is a great idea because I had to put 0% down and look at me. I'm a smart American man, American woman that's going to go buy me a piece of real estate. Well, you've just created yourself a nice little rat trap. That's because you have no idea how to actually do real estate investing in real estate property, right? So that's a con. A con of the property would be purchasing it. The market shifts. A con of it would be purchasing it with little to zero money down and it going down in value because the market you know shifts or it didn't go up in value enough that you have to pay all the fees and you're upside down or you break even right now you're like okay austin whatever i'm going to keep it as a rental i think i'm going to keep it as a rental well i can tell you right out of the gates a lot of times and especially right now even when va loans are hovering around four five six percent you're not going to be able to cash flow why won't you be able to cash flow because you guys are going to owe too much on the property still so if you bought it for the two hundred thousand, right and you still owe two hundred thousand, let's just say i don't know what your payment would be my calculator's over there but let's say your payment's like 1500 bucks and you have maintenance let's add another 200 bucks you're here 1700 bucks boom a lot of times on this specific property you're not gonna be able to rent it out for more let's maybe if you're lucky maybe in this area maybe in this specific scenario you can rent your rent rate you better pray to God is 2000 and after all of it's said and done you hope to make a little bit of money but we're talking a very small margin right and that's okay that's not bad but remember our va loans taken up we can't go buy another primary if we wanted to it's stuck here this is the longest 30 year stretch we could make just barely to get 300 bucks and if you're having to stretch this far to get an investment property you're probably better off taking any money that you have investing in yourself educating yourself so that you can do this as a business and let me explain why you say oh so you're trying to sell me courses no listen why because you can't replicate this process. Why? Because you only get one VA loan.
So how is this a business model? It's not a business model. A VA loan is not a business model. This is not something you can go and continue to do to build your real estate portfolio, to invest in yourself, to invest in wealth, to carry on and teach your kids and to teach everybody else how to make money. Is it? No, it's not. It's a one trick pony. And usually it's spent in only for people that have a primary residence so that you can put little to no money down and have a lower interest rate where the loan is absorbable, right? Now let's go to the pros. What's the pro to this? There's gotta be some kind of pro, Austin. I promise they're not trying to screw veterans. You guys can take what's what you will, right? The pro to this seriously though is allowing people to get into real estate. Let's talk about the good scenarios. Let's say it's so be optimistic, Austin. Be half glass full guy, come on. Well, let's say we purchase the property. Back to my scenario, $200,000. I'm gonna write it all the way out this time. And it goes up in value. We've had a killer year, a real banger. It's 2022 and it's insane. So the property value now is at $250,000. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Good for you guys. Boom, I went up in value. We have this loan, we're kicking butt. And we got into it and you know we've had to make a minimal payment. We're on a 30 year VA loan, 30 year. Amateurization is what it's called. We're at a low 3% interest rate, right? Boom, that's great. 3% interest rate, VA loan. That's cool. That's the good thing about it. And maybe you had to put 0% down. And you're like, I walked into this thing with zero down and I got $50,000 in equity now. That's good. It's not a bad thing. I'm not gonna dive too deep into this, but I want you guys to, to show you a scenario where it's even better. And this is what I've done, is when I built my own home, that's why it goes back to education and how you can learn, is when I built my own home, I built a home, this is for round numbers, I don't want you to know my stuff, but I built my own home for $500,000, right? This was my total cost on a construction loan. Then I got it appraised, the property appraised for a million dollars. Good thing I'm making money than writing it out, right? A million bucks, whoopee ki -yay. So I got $500,000 here in equity, $500,000 in equity, boom. I go get a VA loan here, refinance the construction loan, refi into a VA loan. Now I have a 30 year fixed loan and it's at a 3% low rate, right? It's a pretty low rate. Wow, my payment's a measly freaking $4,100. This is an example, I'm just throwing numbers out there, depending on your area, depending on your taxes, depending on what you got going on, right? Your insurance and shit. $4,100 for this freaking million dollar house. Yeah, that's not a bad deal. But you know what you do? You sell the thing and you recoup the cash and the equity and you keep going to the next deal. But this scenario only played out because of my education and my skill set. You guys can do the exact same thing. You could have instead being all in on a construction home, building it, right? This is me over here, I built it. Instead of building it, you could have rehabbed one, right? You could have rehabbed one and flipped one. And you're gonna to wanna to check with your loans, but you could flip one right here. We're rehabbing it, we're flipping it, and we're taking a piece of junk and we're making it into something nice. And then we go and refinance it with a VA loan, right? But what is that gonna require, guys? What is it gonna require? It's gonna require you guys to educate yourself, invest in yourself, and learn how to rehab a home, rehab, flip a home, build the equity into the property. Because I'll lay out the scenario real quick for you before we end this video on why, because that scenario right there was me building it, right? Let's say our $200,000 house. Everybody in the neighborhood has $200,000 houses. We found the shittiest one on the block for $150,000. And we put, we rehabbed it, we fixed it up, we did some sinks, we did some light cosmetics. Maybe it only cost us 10K, you know? And so now we're all in at 160. This is just the scenario earlier. Now we have let, and then we're gonna get a VA loan on the 160, boom. Now we know that we are equity up because the property value should be, if we did everything right, up to $200,000. We only owe the 160. We created the equity between the 160 and the 200,000. And now we know we can, we're safe. And if we sold the home, we can make the cash. If we kept the home, we could probably have a better rental rate, but we wanna make sure. At this point, to be honest guys, I would advise you that you wouldn't use the VA loan on the refi unless you were gonna live there and it was just stretching you. Um, I would use, and the case that I used it, it was stupid low. The interest rates were like 2.9, 2.5. So I was like, heck yeah, I'm gonna use a VA loan. Sold the property. But a lot of times this scenario right here, why wouldn't you just refinance this property into a conventional loan so that you don't burn up your VA loan. Go get yourself a lake house with your VA loan. I think it has to be your primary. Don't double check me. I'm not a mortgage broker. I don't broker VA loans. All I'm explaining to you guys is that there are pros and cons. And a lot of people come to me and say, I'm a veteran. Austin, you were a veteran. You're a real estate guy. Should I use my VA loan to buy my first deal? And this is the stuff I try to explain to them. Now we have a full video for you guys to watch. If you want to learn how to flip your property, if you want to learn how to build equity into your deal, if you want to learn how to do this professionally, click the link below.
below. And uh, one, just subscribe. Subscribe to my channel right here. I'm gonna continue to educate you guys. Click the like button, make a comment. Let me know what other kind of videos you guys wanna watch. Um, but like I said, click the link below and uh, we'll connect and I'll make sure that I show you exactly how to do this in much more in depth or just join our community. Our school community's in the bio down there. And I'd love to have you on. We're gonna have a ton of content in there as well. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.